You're kind of scary looking on, on video, Lupe. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so, Lupe. I think you're very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think for some of us, we need to dim down the lights. <laughs> Do I need to turn mine off a little bit? No, I'm just messing. You get in, you get in the shine? You get, get in the, the glare? Shine. Your beard's getting thicker. Yeah. Almost winter, huh? You're going to be burning up this summer. <laughs> okay, so we, we're, we're live, so. Okay. <laughs> we have a quorum, Madam Chair. That's my strong hint to get started and get off my phone. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, I will um, call this um, July 10th, 2020 meeting of the Parks and Rec Board um, to order. Um, it is 12.01 p.m. And I am pulling up the agenda that was sent. So forgive me while I look for that. But the first order of business is? Roll call. We'll call. Um, we have a quorum present. Do we have any um, board members absent? I don't see anybody. Okay. Oh, thank you, David. <laughs> you saved me. <laughs> so there's the, and then these are the, there you go. Roll call. And uh, do we have any citizen communication? No, I checked a few minutes ago um, with the secret city secretary and there's no, there's no, um, Public comments or okay. citizen communication. All righty. So then item number four, consideration and approval of part um, board meeting minutes for November um, 2019 and January 2020 and February 2020. And so I, um, just to, to let you all know, I sent you all the, the board meeting minutes for January and, and February. Uh, for some reason we had, um, uh, we haven't finished the November 19th meeting minutes, so we'll get those for the next uh, board meeting. So if you all are okay, we can approve the January and February. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve January and February 2020 minutes? I'll make That's a motion. motion. Okay, I'll so okay, Philip seconds. Um, any opposed? All right. Can you hear me? Um, I know on some of those meetings we were talking about the the TIFA and stuff. Are those going to be moved up? Those minutes on some of those meetings that just kept getting postponed and postponed. Yes. I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. That, so we're in 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 a in a vote right now. Just you can ask the question as right after we vote. So um, was any opposed to these minutes? Okay, so the January um, and February 2020 uh, meeting minutes are approved. I'm sorry, um, Abel, go ahead. Yeah, what I was saying is those those minutes from those meetings, I mean, they're going to be moved up or what? That's what you're saying? The the agenda? Yeah, because I know yeah. all that stuff was just being tabled, so yes. I wanted it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and so I think last time that you and I talked, um, uh -huh. We thought that we would we would move it um, to a um, to another meeting, and so right. um, so whenever you know y'all are comfortable, you know we could put this on the agenda. All right, cool. I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, next item, item number five: presentation and possible action on the proposed Eagle Scout project by Scout Modesto Abers. Yes, I got uh, Mr. Abers on online uh, with us, um, and so uh, Dave, oh, yes, can, me. can you take oh, off? Man. Can you take off the the agenda, Dave, so that uh, well, let's can put his images up. Okay, perfect. So Modesto, if you could kind of introduce yourself, uh, what troop you're with and what your project consists of. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Modesto Lee Abers. Um, I'm from Troop 142 based out of um, St. Paul Lutheran Church in Harlingen. 
Um, I've been in scouting for four or five years. Um, I do apologize. I'm gonna move my bird out real quick so he's not uh, messing with us. I do apologize. Um, birds are one of my favorite things, so I do have a cockatiel. Um, I've always gone to the Hanjin Arroyo um, Park. It's one of my favorite parks. I go hiking and biking there all the time. So I was really excited to hear that I could actually do something for this park. Um, I, I want to do a bird blind for this park. Um, so I can actually go there in one of the other spots that Javier Mendez or someone else in the society will propose for a location. Um, and so yeah, this is just kind of my Eco Scout project because um, I'm 17, turning 18 later this year, and I th I think it's time for me to get my eagle. Sounds great. Um, We'd love to hear about it. Yes. Yeah, so um, one of the first things is safety guidelines um, that I wanted to cover. Um, of course, we're gonna have people have to gather in my area, so I thought I should address this. Um, I'm gonna have a roster. So for example, even though there's 20 or 30 people in my troop, not all of them will be with me at the same time. I'm probably gonna take maximum three, probably maybe four. Um, everyone will be required to wear masks and everyone will be six feet apart. Um, I will show you how we're gonna complete this when I show you all the actual bird blind that we're proposing. Um, and I will actually have a hand sanitation um, that, will, that will be funded by us that basically will allow us to um, sanitize before we work together and then frequently uh, while we're working. And we will have multiple um, in, uh, at the site of the project. Um, and then actually to the actual bird blind, um, this is a um, previously approved bird blind that, that um, was done by another Eagle Scout. Um, once um, John Gavada told me that um, this is a good idea, I should go check it out. Um, I went here, I found this one. I, I really like the idea and I, I, th I think it's very doable. Um, it just composes a variety of four by four, um, 10 to 12 foot poles, and then um, um, eight foot two by fours, which make up the walls of each photo, um, of each, make the walls of each. Um, so it just allows for people to view birds without actually disturbing birds. Um, and so, yes, this is kind of my project that I would like to do for the Hanjin, the Hanjin Arroyo Colorado World Birding Training Center. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, what what site um, specifically are you thinking about? Um, as far as like the location in the park, is that what you're referring to? Um, that I I, I can, I'm um, I like birding, but I'm not like a huge activist. Like for example, John Gavada is. So I actually want to talk to the Master Naturalist and the um, Autobahn Society for actual location that they think is better for it, because yeah, I believe they're. They know that they know it a lot. They know the park a lot better than I do, so they probably know a location already in mind. Um, if they were asking for a bird blind. Awesome. Um, so we're talking about Hugh Ramsey, correct? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Floor, do y'all have any questions for Mr. Abers? No, I'm good. Okay, well, I'm very um, familiar with this picture here, or this bird blind picture. <laughs> My kids love to um, visit and try to view not just birds, but they're always on the lookout for a snake or a turtle. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think this is a great project. Um, I Board, if you don't have any questions, um, Javier, do we just need to um, vote? Yes, and then so the next step would be is to take it to the city commission, and uh, he would do a presentation there. Okay, sounds good. Um, do I hear a motion to approve this project? I make a motion to approve this birdie, uh, birdie project. Okay, do I have a second? A, a second. Motion. A second by Ms. Esparza. Um, any opposed? All right, Mr. Abers, your project is approved by our board, but like Mr. Mendes said, it needs to go through city commission. So we wish you the best of luck. And um, when you do have a finished pro project, um, we would love to see pictures and see if you would like to join us for a future um, board meeting. Perfect, that sounds great. Great, thanks so much for your time. No problem, ma'am, thank you all for yours. Thank you, Melissa. 
So Adele, who who uh, Philip made the motion, right? Yes. And then seconded by Diana. Okay. Okay. David, can you share that agenda again? Thanks so much. Okay, item number six, discussion and possible action on a proposal to install a dog washing station in the city parks. Okay, so um, I guess since we've been um, sort of um, uh, sheltering, you know, there's been a lot of people out in the parks uh, with their dogs, with their pets. And so there was a, um, a gentleman that approached us. Uh, he was interested in um, installing a uh, dog washing station at and see originally his his request was to put it at McKelvey Park and so I suggested that if he would uh, be interested in putting it at uh, Victor at the dog um, the dog park and so he went and looked at it and he, he decided yeah that would probably be the best location so um, so anyway we we are um, entertaining that whether um, we should go out for an RFP and see who's interested in uh, in installing one, or should the city consider doing it uh, ourselves um, and look into to a, a, a station that we could um, operate and manage ourselves. Now, the system that the the dog washing station that he is proposing was a coin operated, so. Um, he would have to draw power and he had to draw water, probably sewer from us. Um, and so it would be coin operated. He, you know, whoever wants to use it would, you know, have to enter coins. And then what it does, it, it'll, it'll have shampoo. Um, it's almost like a car wash. It'd be rinse, shampoo, and then um, uh, hair dry. So um, we thought it was pretty interesting, you know, and, and we said, you know, maybe, uh, Rotary may be interested since they uh, helped us with that dog park. They may be interested in um, in installing one. You know, maybe another project for them. Is that is that money from the going to be coming from the uh, city, or um, it it all depends. So if, if if we were to do it, of course it would be from from uh, from our department. If it came from Rotary, then Rotary would would uh, fundraise for it. Okay. And so if we went out for an RFP, then, you know, whoever comes in would have to submit a proposal um, and they would have to pay us rent um, to use the, the, the land. And so there would have to be some type of concession for it, um, but they would own it. They would uh, operate it, maintain it, and then they would pay us that concession. Now at the end, I mean, depending on, on how the agreement is drawn up, but uh, generally, whatever improvements are made to the park becomes become property of the city. Is there a big need for this? I don't know. If there's a big need. I mean, I think that you know, a couple of times that I've been out there, uh, just walking the site, I ran into some people, and so there's some areas that that um, are generally um, muddy. You know, and when we irrigate, and so the dogs get all pretty mud. And, and so they've approached us um, about installing a, um, a hose so they can rinse off their dogs before they get in the in their vehicles. Oh, so I think there, okay. I think there is, I think there is a need. Okay. I don't know. Um, how, I, 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 who's gonna clean all the stuff, like the air and all that stuff that they leave behind? It, it'd be, I mean, depending if if we did it, then we would have to do it. If Rotary did it, then of course we would have to do it. Uh, if it's if it's a proposal, if somebody from the outside that we contract with, then they would have to clean it. Yeah, I don't know. I think just putting maybe a water hose with a little timing thing would be efficient enough. But well, one, yeah. One of the ladies that I ran into that that has suggested it, uh, I don't know, about six months ago. Um, she said that there's another city that has one, and it's just a concrete. Um, like a basin, and uh, they have a water hose, and and I'm not sure if it's even sh if it's even um, has a roof over it, but he's, she said it's very simple. Um, there's no there's no dryers, none none of that like that. You know, you bring your own towels, 
Uh, but you just rinse, yeah. rinse off the mud. I don't yeah. see a problem with it as long as it doesn't get real costly. Yeah. For the city. Yeah. Um, Tractor Supply has one, but they've got a cool setup. But I think it's five or ten dollars at Tractor Supply. And when I've went, there's been people there, and like, there's been people waiting for the you know the next person. But they've got the it's it's lifted a little bit so that you're not stooping over, you know, washing your dog. So you're washing them at, at, you know, arm level, I guess, really great. Um, you, you, and, said it, you said it costs five or $10 to wash your dog. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but you use all their soap, all their water, all their conditioner, their blower, the whole deal. Like you use all their stuff and that's at tractor supply. So I can see, and then I know when we've taken our dog's, walking on McKelvey, the lab would always jump in the water and then would come out muddy. And if we weren't in the truck, then my SUV would get super muddy. So I see the need. I see what that guy was probably talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about the sanitation though. Like some of these dogs, I mean, I don't know. Their people are just going to take, what do they take dogs that are all mangy and stuff and start washing them there thinking that, you know, cause it's on the city property and you know, I don't know. That's to me. I, I think maybe just a little simple water hose, and and uh, you know they have the the water hose on a timer and just keep it simple like that. But I don't know. I think I think our right now we need to we need to start worrying about uh, hand wash stations for for us. You know, for our kids that are out there at the parks before we worry about washing dogs. You know. Probably well, we need a little bit more information, price wise, and who who would run it. But I'm okay with it as long as it didn't get, like I said, price pricey or. So Javier, do do you what would you like to know from from us? Is it did you do more research or do you want to know from us whether to go for an RFP or to go to Rotary or to it, what specifically would you like us to suggest? Yeah, so I would I would like to to I guess get direction from y'all is like okay. Do do we see a need for it? And then, two, if we do, um, would we um, would we go out for the RP or go to Rotary uh, or try to you know uh, find the funds for from from the city? Okay, gotcha. So, is is it worthwhile pursuing? Is kind of what you like? Okay, okay. So I just think that so many people have pets nowadays and they treat them like children that it's almost like a quality of life uh, um, thing that like one of those bonuses where, oh, my city has this or my city offers this. <clears throat> and a, at, a you know, the dog parks, they were super excited to have um, and the dog parks get used quite often. So whether, you know, we pay for it or Rotary does or something, I think it's worth at least pursuing well, if you're paying five or ten bucks a dog, I guess it pays for itself in the long run, right? If it's coin operated, I mean, if, if, for as long as it's getting used, uh, it's. I think it's worth looking into. Maybe get okay. a little more, get a little more information. Yeah, but right. yeah. So definitely. I, I looked up. I looked at the type of um, uh, dog washing stations, and and I didn't look really in detail, but I found two of them. One that he was proposing, and then there was another one. Um, and so the other one that I saw was very, you know, uh, elaborate. You know, it was air conditioned. It's like a you walk in, and then you know, it's you wash your dog and and do the whole the whole thing, right? So I just don't know what the cost on those things are. Yeah, I was just thinking that our lab would jump in the arroyo, get muddy. And come out. And she was a yellow lab, but when by the time we left, she was a chocolate lab. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so so I can see I can see the need. Okay. Um, does anybody want to entertain a motion? I guess make, I'll make a motion to look into it, uh, the cost, and uh, who would like to entertain it. Okay. Uh, Philip uh, moves. Anybody seconds? I would make a second, but also we have to uh, make sure the upkeep, because mm -hmm. like you say, Adele, you know, after if your dog jumps in the arroyo and then comes out and you use that station 
at the end of the day, who's going to be doing the upkeep? Right. So that's very important because no offense to you, Adele, but you do your dog, you know, and then I come in with my chit tzu after you <laughs> and try to get her in there. Uh, you know, there's, would I want to put my baby in there? <laughs> Something to think about. Yeah, just more stuff for Javier to look into. Yeah. I second. Okay. Anybody opposed? Okay. All right, guys. Motion carries, Javier, on that one. Um, item number seven, discussion and possible action on the request to include a dog park at Pendleton. Yeah, so this is another another person that called. Um, he says he walks his dog over at Pendleton Park um, and was asking whether we if we had plans to build a dog park there. And I said, well, at the moment, um, none of our plans um, include a dog park at Pendleton. And so I know that um, it's, so it's, one, one, it's not included in our master plan, our park master plan. Two is I was mentioning to him that we are including um, in the master plan for the destination park is to include a dog park there. And so, um, so anyway, he wanted us to consider uh, adding a dog park to Pendleton uh, in our master plan. And so I know that, that our master plan is coming up for, um, for updating. And so we're gonna have to um, start conducting uh, uh, hearings, public hearings. And so uh, I told him I would put it on the agenda and see what the, the board thought about um, including that type of activity at, at the park. Uh, how is the one, is that Victor, right? The one at Victor, how's that one doing? Doing really good. Um, there's there's quite a, a bit of people that, that go out there. And so when we, when we did the shutdown of all our parks, uh, there was a big, uh, I don't wanna say outcry, but there was a lot of people asking for us to open up the dog park. Um, and so that, since that wasn't restricted, we, we did open up the, the dog park uh, to the public. Right. It's, that's not, that's not been a really bad thing for the city. It's been a good thing. Yeah. Okay. It's been, it's been very had, but, but you're, you're talking about, uh, you know, building another park. I, I mean, I think this guy just bored at home. So he wants to walk close to his house. I mean, I don't think it's that big of a deal for him to drive from that side of town to Victor park and do it. I know when they made the dog park at Victor, uh, they, you know, back when the HYFL was booming, they took a lot of field play away from those kids for, where there was no place to practice. And now here, you know, you're going to do the same thing at Pendleton Park. And uh, I know, you know, we've been talking about usage of Pendleton Park and how there was already a, a thing there where the football fields were already raised up the dirt to, to do stuff like that. And that pro project never got done. And here we want, they're talking about doing a dog park. Why don't they finish that project that they had already laid up the dirt and did all that before we start doing another park or dog park that, you know, we already have two of them and or what one or two of them. And you're saying that destination park, they're going to make another one. So I think that should be out of the question already. Well, to add to, to uh, Abel's comment, is there a need for a third uh, dog park? Do we have that many people? Is there, is there more there? than one? Is there more than one that's asking? No, it was just this one gentleman that, that approached us. Um, and um, I mean, at least at this point, right? He's only, uh, he approached us and asked if we could, um, uh, one, he wanted, he, he was asking when our next meeting was because he wanted to come and present this to y'all. But, you know, I, I mean, I, I would. Audience, I would table it and kind of just wait until there's more of a demand and let's let's take care of our like Abel was saying maybe take care of some of the other things first but you know something to look into you know point. right and so the 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 point wasn't to to get authorization to build it the the the, the idea was just to include it in our master plan right and so yeah. if if do we want it include a dog park in the um, in the master plan of Pendleton Park. Now, the the, the advantage, and I, I shouldn't say advantage because 
because it may or may not happen, right? But if, let's say if we were to look at somewhere in Pendleton, I mean, HEB has, has been a sponsor mm -hmm. of the tennis center, right? And so if we were to consider that, I was going to check to see if, if HEB was even interested in, in maybe funding it, right? Uh, similar mm -hmm. to what Rotary did at Victor. But, but I see y'all's point where, you know, mm -hmm. Does a city, does a city our size, does it uh, merit having three dog parks? So yeah. how many are there currently? I only know about the one at Victor. Is there one I'm missing? No, no. The other one is just a, a plan um, for destination, is to build oh, one at destination. At Lonsey Hill? Yes. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But it's not built yet. So the, right now we only have one in, in our inventory. Right. I know, I know, and I mean, I, I like dogs. I love dogs. You know, I have four of them. Um, but you know, I, I, you go to all these other parks too, and these people have their dogs. You can go to the soccer fields all the time, and they got their dogs running loose out there. You know, I mean, people can take their dogs, you know, wherever they want, pretty much. I mean, I know they're not supposed to have them loose out there or have a leash law, but they do it either way. So, you know, I think, I mean, yeah, I know it's supposed to be a little controlled area, but I think we already have too much in or. We have one already designated and they have one in that destination park. I think, yeah, two should be enough for a city this size. It might be inconvenient for the person to drive a little further, but I mean, oh, well, that's what, you know, there's- uh, You don't need an action, really, do you? It. Javier, you don't need really an action, just, or you want us to say something about looking into it? Well, I mean, if you, yeah, if y'all don't, aren't, are not interested in, you know, we won't, um, if he calls back, I'll just tell him that, you know, we, we discussed it and, and it wasn't, um, um, we didn't feel that it, you know, that, that there was a need for having a third one. I don't think at this point, I don't know. My, my opinion is we don't seem like we need one, uh, but we just need to probably keep it in mind as yeah. we grow. I definitely think we should keep it in mind. Um, I, I, I think it's one of those things where the folks who are using the, the parks are probably the ones who are spending lots of money at PetSmart and we're getting those tax dollars and um, yeah. like that. And so we want those folks to live in our city, shop in our city, eat in our city. Um, so I, I think it's worth, you know, keeping on our radar, but maybe not moving on it if the board doesn't want to move on it, you know, right at this minute. Okay. Unless someone wants to make a motion, I, I, I'm opening the floor if anyone needs to make a motion. I agree. Um, I, I agree with her too. Okay. Javier, you said right now that HEB was maybe willing to uh, do some donations or whatever to, to pay for this. What about asking HEB to help maybe set up hand wash stations all around our parks like where these kids play? Because I think that's going to be a big issue coming up, you know, that we need to we're going to open up the parks. We need to keep them sanitized. And, you know, I have a six-year-old and I know they touch everything. I can tell them, don't touch your face. Don't do it. I turn around. He's got his fingers, you know, in his mouth, you know, and, and uh, maybe AGB can help fund, you know, hand wash stations. I think that's a necessity that we need over dogs, over anything right now. We need to get our parks back open and we need to get them in a safe way for, you know, for our, our kids or our adult leagues that are playing, we need hand wash stations. I, I, I believe everywhere. I think that's number nine, kinda, but yeah. Absolutely, yeah, I think we jumped ahead a little bit. Let me, let's get to number eight. Um, discussion and update on the amended terms and conditions for the league facility use agreements. Yeah, so I know that we talked about it in our workshop um, that we had. And so the the David and Lupe were working on on a um, on a draft, and so there were several questions that had come up, and so I told them that let's put it back on the agenda to give you all an update where we're at, and then also um, see if we can ask those questions uh, so that we can kind of get get an, get a um, get direction from y'all uh, how we want to how we want to um, address it. So either David or, or Lupe, if y'all want to. Time in. Lupe. He's taking it uh, out. I guess <laughs> I guess we just want more clarification as far as those suggested amendments that we wanted to put on. Um, as far as like the percentage 
of the registrants being from Harringen? Is that is that something we're going to have across the board? The same percentage for every sport, or would it would it change from sport to sport? Which which sports would it make a big difference in? The smaller the smaller numbered. Um. Uh, well. Because I, I I know what you're saying. Because if there's a small amount of number, that percentage can change a lot. Right. And and would we would it be just to register into the league? <clears throat> and still allow okay. interlock play. Yeah. Refresh my memory. What did we say? What was the percentage? I remember the conversation. I forgot the percentage. I think it was 60. 40, 40 60. Yeah. But it does that does that include interlock play or do we not include interlock play? Or is this registrants in that in that one league? For example, I know I know soccer does interlocking. I know football does interlocking, and we know softball does a lot of interlocking. Uh, uh, softball, baseball, where other teams come in and play in their league as a team. Uh, so do those get counted as part of the agreement? I don't think it should. I don't think it should. The interlocking is a little different than when we're discussing registration. So just registrants in that one league. Yeah. I, I haven't thought about it enough to make a comment. Yeah, that's how that's how we've been. <laughs> it, it's just it, we're trying to make sure we don't. Um, Why don't we just table it and wait till we start getting the parks open? Because, you know, I, no leagues are going to be playing right now anyway. Yeah, but our parks um, our people are still working, and so they need to start developing this now. Not everything goes on pause just because the parks are closed. Um, so they need guidance now so they can start writing. And it's a, actually, it's a good time to do it while they're it's a great time to do it. Um, the, the reason this was brought up was because we don't want people from other cities running our leagues or kids from other cities dominating our fields. I think this is why this was brought up, right? So uh, I, I think when you're talking about interlocking, it's, it's apples and oranges because there's fee, there's game, there's teams, so there's leagues that they have to inter, interlock. In other, in other words, that they have games. Baseball and softball is not as as big as soft soccer is. So unless they interlock, they'd be playing the same two or three teams all year long that's already happening at the little league team at the little league field they play the same three teams all year long they don't interlock and, and these and teams the other these teams are coming from outside the city and they're using they're just playing games or are they using our fields during practice and no, stuff? no they don't use they just use the fields for they use the fields for games is what they use the fields for they come in for a game and then sometimes these harlingen teams also go to their field and play right and, and that's that's what it's, that's what it's about. It's, it's so, having so teams so coming in. We're not worried about them oh, using our facilities for practice. We're just and and it actually helps our team so we have other people to play. Right. right? But, 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 okay. But again, we're talking about who's running our fields, right? This is this is the big reason why all this was brought up. Who's running our fields? Who's using our fields? The fields should be run by Harlingen people. The field should be registered for Harlingen people. Now they're going to interlock. That's fine. But that was, I think this was the reason this whole thing was brought up because we were having, or there was notions of people from outside of Harlingen running our leagues and they were using teams from just other cities where Harlingen wasn't even in their plane. Oh, now there needs to be something. To, to not let that happen. Um, so, so again, with the question that was asked, I, I know I, I I I think the percentage is okay, but you can't you can't count the interlock teams in that. Now, if you have a league with just one Harlingen team and they're using our field, and that field's not allowed to be used for anything else, and that's something we got to look at. Are you a league or are you a team using yeah. our fields? Um, 
And so, so, and bringing that up, that was another one. Was it the amount of teams, or is it the amount of players, participants, per league? Players. I think we said like 150 kids need to be registered, something like that. So. You, you, you've been around this a long time, Dave. I mean, if it's just one team using the entire field, you know, then, then you know we have an issue. Do we have that right now? One team using a field or monopolizing it? I, I don't know about one team, but um, I mean, I, I, I don't know. There's, there's soccer I know is not one of them. Uh -huh. Baseball and softball. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't well, soccer, you had the Toros coming in that were, I, from what my understanding, the Toros dropped the, the actual, they dropped that guy that was actually running the program so they're not affiliated with them anymore but they were taking up the whole field seven and uh they were from outside and they were just using our facilities here to practice but they were playing out of a san antonio league and they were hogging up all the field seven nobody could go in there and practice and we you know the soccer had a, a bunch of kids that needed to a place to practice but the toros had all the field seven so, okay, so we don't want people from outside running it or we don't want the kids from Harlingen running it. I, I, that's a, the participants are, are from Harlingen? Well, or the that was both. Actually, their, their coach was from, uh, I believe, Edinburgh area where they had already uh, told him he, he wasn't welcomed over there. And he came to over here and y'all opened up field seven to him. And, uh, and, you know, a lot of their kids, there was like a select team. So their kids were from all over the valley. And they were playing on field seven. They they got issued field seven, okay. and the Royal Soccer had seven hundred and something kids, and they were squeezed. You know, the field one and two were taken away, and field seven they couldn't use. So they had all those kids trying to look, you know, really hard places to practice. So okay, that's, uh, that's, that's that's what we have, going so is we have registered all over the place. But that's that's what this contract is. It's to to say, okay, if you even if you're not from Harlingen. But your register, your the people that are registered are sixty forty. Is that okay? Or no? I don't know. I think I think our hard engine kids should come first, especially like in a situation like that. Yes, well, then, then, you know. And, and, and I know I know we, you, you talked about bringing tax dollars and all this to, to that, but they go and play a different. They go play out of a San Antonio. Their base league is out of a San Antonio league. They're not based out of Harlingen, and they play over there. That's not bringing you know. I mean, I don't, that's that, is it me, set that up for the contract out pretty soon for that one? Yeah, when is that up? Pretty much everybody's coming up right now that there's yeah going on. We we might be able to take care of that in the next vote, but um, right. I think David was asking is if the person running the league it lives in another city, but the kids in the league are. 60% Harlingen kid. Is that okay? Is that what you were asking, David? Yes. Uh, is that what we're looking for? I mean, I, that's that's, that's kind of that. clarification we're trying to get. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that too. I, I think if you're going to run a league in Harlingen, you should be in Harlingen. I know when I got onto the Parks and Red Board, it said I, you must be a resident of Harlingen, you know, and, you know, I, I, I think that that should be part of it. And I also know that uh, we also talked about background checks. I think we, you know, we had a background check being on the Parks and Rec Board. I feel that everybody, a director, anybody running a league should have a background check as well. You know, I, I had brought up the stuff that that they had a registered sex offender on one of the boards and, you know, that, that, that wasn't right either. You know, that's why I feel that if you're going to be running a park, you know, you should have a background check. You should be from Harlingen. And I know they said you should be current in your taxes or whatever too. I don't know about taxes for the park, but I know that was part of the board, you know, so. I think all of our coaches have to have background check, right? No. No? No. No. I know that I know that they do in soccer because I, I was getting three background checks a year when I was teaching. Yeah, I think that was probably through like what, Stisa though, no? Stisa required yeah, the, that. But the the city, that's the city, where the association yeah. comes in. Okay. Yeah. The association okay. Does. Maybe we but need I to feel look maybe into a city background check, you know? We, we may need to look into that. I don't know, that might get pricey and a little more work, but um, that might be something we need to do. 
So back to the participants um, <laughs> numbers. Um, I say I, I say at least sixty percent, sixty to seventy percent should be Harlingen based kids. Okay, but per team or per per uh, whole group? Registered. 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 Okay. Registered's fine. I mean, I, I mean, if you run a league, yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna pick up the the kids from La Feria, Rio Hondo, Lyford, Sebastian. But I say that they should be Harlingen based kids because you know we are the taxpayers here in Harlingen, and we got to worry about. Put Harlingen first, you know. Okay, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say one organization, and, and it's not to call them out. I just wanna I don't have enough information on them, but for example, Arroyo uh, softball. How many participants do they have? How many teams do they have? Because the, from what I understand is a lot of their play is from outside teams. Yeah, I don't know anything about them. The softball. I don't know anything about them. It is. The majority is from the outside. So the majority if, they is have, from the outside. if they have four teams, I mean, they basically have 60 players, give or take. But then again, you got to take into consideration, too, there's not many girls softball. So it's probably harder to get girls to play softball than it is, base, you know, boys to get baseball. I'm just saying I, I try to force my daughters when they were younger to play softball. They didn't want to. And, you know, now that they're older, they regret it. But, I, I, you know, a lot of girls, I know a lot of girls play soccer, you know, and, and just from my little experience, it was hard to get my girls to play softball. So I can imagine, you know, it's probably hard to get girls to register for softball versus boys for baseball, you know. So I how, can understand we, a little bit just in that league alone, you know. How are we policing these numbers? Do we got somebody on it uh, from the city for each well, it's, uh, it, sport? It's never it's never really been an issue with the, I mean, we didn't police how many uh, participants we had to begin with that. I think that's what this conversation is about. To yeah, because there's no use making a, a rule of 60, 40, if there's got nobody to police it. Right. And, and, True. and then it's, also, it's also the honor system. I mean, they can, oh. <laughs> no. I, I hate to laugh, but, but you know, yeah. some, some people don't have honor. Correct. I mean, whatever they submit to the city is all we're going to go by. We're not going to say, well, are you sure these are, this, I mean, uh -huh. We're not going to go out there and every single parent. Yeah, we're not going to do that. So it's it's whatever gets turned in is and you know it's and it's the same thing with everything. I mean, if you turn in your insurance, I mean, obviously our risk management calls and verifies. Yeah. But if, if we were not to do that, I mean, we're talking about one thing. But whatever information, like your finances, are they submitted? I mean, mm -hmm. we take it as that's it's legit, and they're you know they're being honest with the numbers. Uh, same thing so, with enrollment. So what do we need to do? Like on the softball, Ed was saying it's not 60-40. Do we need to uh, well, investigate? Well, it could be 100%. I don't know. It could be 100%, yeah. but the thing is that maybe they have one team. Maybe they have two teams. I don't know. But are we going to compare them to football where they need four teams or six teams or baseball that needs to have, you know, that's, what, that's where it's, we need to have a uh, – a baseline for every every league that has a contract every, every it's sport vary. yeah it's going to vary and that's why we don't want to be well soccer has huge numbers so I, I, it doesn't matter what we do they're going to be fine but uh -huh. for the other leagues um we don't want to um what's the word I, I guess leave it real hard for them to meet those numbers where it's not right you know and that's for whoever I mean, obviously, we don't have basketball here, but I mean, they, they, the smaller the groups are, the harder it is to get those numbers. It be, besides the tor the Toros having, you know, irritating us a little bit, is there any other sport that's having this problem? Um, worrying about the 60 40 or is it complaining or anything? Um, I don't know about that, but I know like if they're not meeting numbers, like, they don't have enough teams and they have a whole park. I think that should be an issue as well, too. You know, like you were saying, the same, the same, uh, the same two teams, three teams play each other all year long. I mean, you know, if they're not making the league work. I think that should be taken into consideration as yeah. far as their contract goes as well. You know, if, if they're hurting for numbers and, you know, they have the whole field, you know, I mean, the whole park down and all these other baseball fields and somebody else wants to come in and do a league. I mean, I think, 
you know, if they're not making it or or just limit them to these two fields, that's all you're going to use, you know, versus the whole park it shouldn't be, you know, that, that, that shouldn't. So that, I think you know. that's all very reasonable. And I, I, I want to say we, um, I want to say Lupin and David are asking for some sort of clarification of how we can put this in writing. And we are, we are telling them that it's all very um, subjective and they're saying you that's can't subjective in a contract or okay. Well, okay if they want to put it in writing then this should be 60 to 70 percent of the kids that are registered should be harlingen kids that should be it 60 to 70 percent harlingen so we agreed on the 60 40 so we already know that they they already knew Man, that but 40 40s low 40s too low i say 60 to 70 no, no 60 no, no. 40 split the split Split. Oh, okay. So 60 yeah. would be from Harlingen and 40 would not be from Harlingen. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, and and so he, they already knew that coming in. So we just repeated what they already knew coming into this meeting. Are you, David, are you on the clause maybe for in case there's a situation where it might go different than 40%, but if we don't, if we don't let it happen, then that those teams might get shut down, that whole league might get shut down. There probably needs to be some kind of a clause for each stipulate for each situation because you know I, I think that's what you're looking for. Maybe David, it, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be a uh, if 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 you're over here, then 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 what are we doing from here? Like that, you know, A mm -hmm. happens and B happens. Does it come back to the parks board for? Okay, they're at sixty five percent, and does it come back to the parks board and then commission? Or does administration have the say, okay, well, you're still within, you know, yeah. the 70% that, that Abel was talking about. What does, do we have leeway? I mean, we can. And again, it's it's going to be based on the numbers that they give us. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're, and they're, they're truthful do. numbers, too. What do they just fill out a bunch of things, you know, and Correct. say, oh, we got these kids. So, so it's going to be hard unless you, every, every, uh, you know, if they're using a city park, then you they have to re, re, uh, submit the you know the the registration forms to y'all, and y'all can just go through them, you know, and call certain people and say just make sure that they're legit, you know. Well, we know we're not going to be honest about it. Yeah, and we're talking about city limits, right? Not school district limits. As far as what? What do you mean? Well, I'm sure there's some that live in the outskirts of Harlingen that are not city limits, but yet they still go to, you know. Yeah, they're, that's they're that's still fine. Yeah. To Harlingen High. Yeah. Or they're still yeah, zone zone. like like Primera and area, right? Combs, you know. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. I still consider. I mean, consider Primera and Combs. I consider it Harlingen. It's just like a little. Kind of like uh, the country club area, you know, Palm Valley or whatever. They, they, when, when these teams register or the, the, I, you know, they want the use of these fields, they have to come to, I guess, to the board or, or to you or Javier or whoever and say, this is our league. This is who we're associated with, just like you guys have Taifa and all those other associations. These are our kids that registered for this league. This is how many teams we have. And I mean, they have to present the whole situation because if, if they're coming, if they're using our fields and they only have two or three teams there, and yet they're monopolizing our field for the entire year and we're not allowed to use it there for anyone, a corporation or somebody wants to use the fields for a company picnic and we can't because this, this two or three team league has it, then this is what this whole thing was about, wasn't it? And yeah. it's not a cart horse kind of situation or a chicken egg kind of situation. Are they coming to us first with registered kids or they're coming up to us first for permission to start registering kids? Do you know what I mean? So we don't Correct. know. Yeah. I think they come to us and say, hey, I think volleyball is going to blow up this year. I would like to have a volleyball league and I want your one beach volleyball court and because it's going to be huge. Um and we say, okay, here's the contract. When you're recruiting, recruit heavy in Harlingen because if you don't make these numbers, then we have the ability to cancel the contract. Right. If There's your clause. Right. I yeah, agree. That's what I agree. Philip is talking about 
Because they're not coming to us with registered kids. They're coming to us asking if they have permission to yeah. register. That, that but was see, another... that, that, it's kind of hard because, like, for instance, I wanted to do a kickball league, but I can't say, oh, I'm going to register for kick or, you know, register for kickball, but I don't have a home. You know what I mean? I get, and then and then it doesn't go through. I mean, look how long I've been trying to do this for football to get a, a home field for football. It's been over a year already, you know, and I still haven't gotten anything. But uh, the, the thing is, for like, you can't go and register a, a league without a home place. You need a home place so you can run that's a league. Exactly, you know? That's exactly what I just said. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what we're, that was another thing we wanted to add in there is that we would be six months out. I mean, I don't know if it's six months or annually, but like for example, if we were gonna do um, any contracts, we would like to do it for 2021, where you as a whoever, and I'm just saying you you as a as the president or the directors of that league know, okay, in 2021 we're good. But in 2021, you're already looking for 2022 so that they know what's coming up. But at the same time, I mean, it's it's just, it's one of those things like you might approve something based on how are their numbers in 2021 for 2022. Oh, okay. I get not you. approve it. Okay. So that makes sense. It's just, it, it as an organizer, it's better to know that you have a location, just like Abel was saying. Yeah, yeah, you can't register kids oh, yeah. if they don't know where they're going to play. Yeah. For planning purposes. Yes. I mean, that's basically how the city runs. I mean, we're, we're looking for budget for ne for next next year, and it's just kind of the it's same thing. I mean, it's, it's project out and not be running uh, one month right before the season starts, you're going to get a contract. Right, yeah. So we're still not sure on the the minimum number. We're just going to go 60-40 for the leagues. 60-40 in the leagues. And then if you have conflict, it's like you said, David, you're going to have to always be referencing the prior year's numbers. And so if someone is asking for a contract for 2021 um, and, there's a con and someone else is asking for that same field, you're going to reference that... Um, the previous year's numbers and say like you pulled together two teams and this people think that they can pull together you know seven and so yeah I, I get you I get where you're coming through this David have you uh investigated some other cities similar to our size and see what they've done in these situations <clears throat> well the some of the other cities run their own leagues, so that that makes a big difference. Yeah. Uh, but where where I came from, uh, the only stipulation we did was to to take back some of the control. Was um, we added on there with within thirty days we could ask for a date, and they had to work around that. So in other words, if for whatever reason we needed to use the fields, let's say at, I'm going to say Victor Park. Mm -hmm. um, within 30 days, we'd say, hey, we're, this weekend, you need to reschedule whatever because we need to do whatever, whatever was going on, some concert or something that the city was going to have. Not yeah. to give it to another league, but to just to have that control that the property still belongs to the city. Yeah. Just occupying it. And it should be that way, Dave. It should yes. be that way. So uh, other than that, I mean, that was the only major change that we did when I was over there. But do they have um, splits on membership, um, living in the city boundary, and all of those things? No. Does anybody in the valley? Um, well, I could look into it. Yeah, I think just for just just for kind of comparison and see if we can get some ideas that would help us maybe look into it. Okay. Yeah. I hate reinventing the wheel. I mean, people are have been doing this for many, many years. And and it's not to say that we need to rip and repeat whatever we see from, from somewhere else, but we certainly can tweak and make it hard. Make sure. it hard. Make know? it work for yeah. us. Right. You got haven't it. heard of any Lupe at um, other cities? No, not on not on stipulations as far as numbers are concerned. Um, but like David mentioned, some cities do have they run the league themselves or most of the cities that I've talked to the boys club does. 
Right. Yeah, and so I think this the contract that we use, the, the facility use agreement, we've kind of shared throughout the valley that same agreement. Um, it's kind of a standard for everybody. So okay. All right. Well, this was just oh yeah, yeah, this was just a discussion item. So no no motions need to come through that. But I guess just guidance from us would be um to, to research what other cities do and maybe present to the to us at the next meeting. We'll bring it back. Just keep up the hard work. <laughs> Thank you, David and Lupe. Um, next item number nine, discussion and updates on activities related to COVID-19, including park rentals, public pools, food drives, summer and sports activities. Okay, so what I wanted to do is just give you all an update. Um, I know it's kind of late in the in the game, but we um as you all know, we've we've closed down the parks, um, and so all our facilities and amenities are closed as well. And so what we've had to do is um, whatever we collected in advance for rentals or for registrations, we've had to return that money. And so I just kind of wanted to give you all an update. You know, we've been very busy as far as sanitizing. Um, you know, on the on the other part of our responsibility, of course, is public buildings, right? And so anybody gets ill uh, or test positive, then we have to go out there and send our crews to go and sanitize their area, their work area. And so, um, so we're just constantly trying to figure out ways how to protect our staff um, and, of course, the public. And so... But anyway, just to kind of give you an update, um, so far as of yesterday, we, 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 we've we returned uh, $7,000 of uh, rentals for our pavilions. And then um, something that's not related to parks, of course, but public buildings, we've, kind of, we've returned $17,439 of rental fees. And so um, that's just to kind of give you an idea. Um, and then what we've lost for the uh, summer and pools, uh, we've estimated uh, 65,000 and that's from March through September because we're not gonna open up the pools this summer at all. Um, and then I'm, I'll let uh, David, I mean, uh, Lupe and, and um, Betsy um, let you know how, how we're doing in the recreation and the um, athletics part of it. Start. Let's see. I'll go first. Yeah, I'll go first. So uh, for the recreation part um, of the department, which is, of course, the dance classes, uh, guitar, the, all the summer um, uh, little special camps that we do, like the robotics, the uh, dance camp, um, that's a uh, loss of uh, $12,000. And then for the summer, summer playground program alone, that's another $12,000. So for my department, um, the total loss is $24,593. On the, on the athletic side, uh, with our spring, summer, and fall softball leagues, our spring we did actually get two weeks in before we shut down. But with the summer and fall, the projections are based on the average of teams that registered the last three seasons or last three years, we would be missing out on $27,350 on the softball side. Uh, with no summer track this summer, we lost out on $4,375. No seven on seven, it's $3,200. And concession as far as the fees that Kona Ice pays uh, the city for being out at the adult softball complex uh, was $3,458 for a grand total of $38,383. So it just kind of gives you an idea. I mean, some, some of those fees aren't really to, to make a profit, right? But it's just kind of... Uh, and it's really not even to sustain it because there's there's more expenses than, than what we collect. And so, but it just kind of gives you an idea where we're at. Um, um, 
So revenue wise, um, of course, on the flip side of that, if we don't have any, any programs, of course, we, we don't have any expenses. Well, there is a savings there um, on staffing and, and of course the benefits and, and all those that go with it. Um, but like the pools I mean, the pools are still, we're still maintaining them. Um, the guys are going out there and adding chemicals to keep the, the pools up uh, clean. And so, but, um, but other than that, everything else is shut down. The, um, the um, fields have been getting a much needed rest. So the guys are, are maintaining those and taking care of those. And so in addition to, to whatever we, we're, um, we're doing for COVID, um, we have been having our food drives at the soccer complex. Uh, we were having, you know, some instances maybe weekly, um, but those things have um, have dwindled. And so now um, we're we're hosting or we're helping with the Farmers to Families uh, program. And so what that is, it's a USDA grant. And so um, there's a group of volunteers that are coming out. They're, they're um, supplying churches and non-for-profits food. Um, it includes milk, meat, and vegetables and canned goods. And so what they do is the churches come and they're at a designated time. They pick up their, their food. They take it back to their, to their churches and then they distribute it to the, um, uh, the low income areas. And so they get it out into the, where it's needed. So uh, that's, that's what we wanted to share with you um, as far as what we're doing uh, for COVID. Hey, Javier, what about, I, I see how you have those Zumba classes that, you know, on that they go on the parks, I guess, and rec page, the Facebook page. What oh, if yeah. you were to start just like going up to, you know, some of these local businesses that do Zumba and do yoga and stuff like that and just say, hey, you know, 50 bucks a week and you can advertise or you can you can do your live video at this time from this time and start booking a, a, a schedule and you, it's just brought to you by the Parks and Rec board. It's advertisement for their business and, and uh, you know, it keeps people watching and, and active, you know. I always see that, that Zumba thing every day, you know what I mean? Like the, the ladies, they, I see them on my feed on Facebook all the time and maybe if you start uh, kind of, you know, advertising for these local businesses, but yet they're, everybody gets a chance to to come out on that or something. I don't know. Maybe that, that you know, charge them a small fee and, you know, you make, it makes a little money for the, the parks and rec as well, you know? Yeah. And so that was one of the things that, that um, uh, I forgot to mention, right? And I think it's part of the updates is, is the, the virtual recreation that uh, Betsy's putting on um, through her program. Yeah. I think that's going to be pretty cool for, or at least for a while, because I don't know, man. I don't, I don't see this going away anytime soon. Okay, guys, moving on to updates, parks. Dave, you want to take this one, or you want me to? Yeah, you can start off with this one here. Okay, so on the destination park, I, I think um, Dave has a PowerPoint he's going to go through. I'm just going to show you. Um, uh, Is it on the screen? It's on the screen, right? No, we still got the agenda. Oh, okay. I, I've, it's got, I've, I've been flipping through it. And nobody said anything. So hold on here. Hold on. Let me, let me get here. Sorry. Oops. Is that, is that it? Yeah, there you go. Go back. Okay, so if you all pass by Fair Park, you all can see the... Um, the, the project is coming, um, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's coming along. And so there's a lot of, a lot of um, moving parts in it. Um, you know, we're, we're uh, having to contact the utility companies, you know, cause there's, you know, whenever you start doing renovations, right? You don't know where some of the utilities are. Okay, utilities are. We've worked through some of those details already. Um, and um, so they're moving along. Um, on the improvements, we got the parking lots coming up uh, as well. Um, and so, um, I don't know if you have any questions on, on that project, uh, but we're still shooting for, um, I believe it's October, is to have that project complete. 
there's been some some delays uh just to let you all know because of covid again is is the delivery of materials um and some of it has been staff i mean the laborers right so that some of their their employees have gotten sick ill and so that has kind of caused a delay um in some of the the components of the project uh, on the tennis center um we we brought in the mobile mini a new mobile mini for uh the tennis tennis guys uh we moved out the old the old trailer uh took down some fencing and just this week uh the two back holes they started uh excavating down um where the where the new building is going to be so um we've already run through some little 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 bit of issues but uh we're going to work through them um it's good uh hunter park uh Wait, this, you go back to the tennis center what's um what's the timeline on that so that one's that one's 180 days um, contract. So I think that ran us through, I think I believe August of next year. Um, Cause it's 180 working days, and so uh, excluding excluding weekends and holidays, and so that ran us through uh, I believe August of next year. Okay. Yeah, are they tear, are they gonna tear out those palm trees or they're leaving them up? Those palm trees, I don't think, are are going to be moved out. We took out whatever was going to be in the in the project site already. Those are nice, man. I'm... Yeah, the, the, whatever is there is staying now. Uh, the Hunter Park project. Um, our staff took down the old unit that was there. Um, as you can see, it's already just dirt. We filled it up. Um, so now the new project, which I'll I'll put up in a little bit um we'll go on this this new site i guess so whatever elevation it was kind of a kind of a hole um has been uh i guess uh, recap on the cdbg project uh we finally have gotten with aep uh they're they're gonna put the pad in on monday uh pending any weather uh, but the weather looks good in the forecast, so uh, the transformer should be in and the electrician should be in right behind them. So hopefully that project will be complete and then uh, we should have um, hopefully be ready for phase two. Um, some other projects that our guys are working on right now that there's obviously they have time uh, with the not, not so much use of the fields. Uh, some of the dugouts being changed, some of the bleachers, uh, fertilizing when it was when all the, we had all the the water, uh, the soccer fields, and you know, so there's they're still they're still working on the on the on the facilities, even if the we're not being used right now, because it gives us time. Uh, we just talked about the food distribution. Um, we've had six total so far. Uh, but now we've kind of shifted over and uh, like Mendes uh, said earlier, now it's going directly to the churches and they are starting to distribute. So I think they're doing several truckloads a day. I want to say it was what, 10 truckloads a day? 17. 17 truckloads a day. So, uh, but that's going directly to the churches and then they're distributing it. Um, not, this was, when we were doing them, it was going directly to the, uh, uh, I guess the end user. And now we're going, it's like a middleman now. So, but it's a lot more, a lot more product, and I believe it's a six-week project. So, I think it's every day, uh, Monday through Saturday, uh, That's right. ten to fifteen, ten to seventeen loads of, of eighteen wheelers. Um, this is uh, Betsy. Okay, yes, that's me. So um, as mentioned before, we, you know, we shifted our, our classes, all our, uh, especially the fitness classes um, that were free, we shift that to um, different type of social media platforms. Uh, we have Facebook, we do YouTube, we do WhatsApp, uh, whatever works for our citizens. Um, so as you all know, the classes have been canceled sin, since March, but we're still doing that. We're still teaching Zumba, Pilates, stretch and tone, chair workout. 
We also have um, one of our recreation classes for the kids. We're still doing the art class um, through Zoom. And also, oh, we are working with the uh, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. With them, we're um, doing like online uh, cooking classes. Um, we are gonna start uh, soon uh, parenting classes, um, anger management, and a program that calls um, Walk Across Texas, which is a program to help citizens to more or less establish um, like a, a habit to be regularly, um, you know, to do regular physical activity, I should say. And for now, that's it. That's awesome, Betsy. <clears throat> is the list of um, the schedule, is that on the website? Um, actually, we, I have to post it again, but, um, uh, the CBB uh, department, they helped me um, by creating a schedule and we posted it on Facebook, but I, I can, of course, uh, we posted it um, uh, regularly. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yes. And we're still, of course, looking for more ideas, you know, to keep the, the citizens um, active. Unfortunately for the kids, it's a little bit more difficult to plan um, things, but I guess, you know, keep um, looking for, for ideas. Great. Um, next up on the agenda, who's next? Uh, I just, hold on, one more thing on the parks. So the Hunter Park, um, we, we got our, uh, do you see that right there, playground? No, we just see the, the windows part of it. Sorry. Right. Folder. Hold on. There? There no? you go. Yeah, okay. there you go. Okay. So we we went out for or uh CDBG went out for the RFP for the new playground. What we just showed you earlier that we, I guess we're, we prepped the area to install this new playground. Um, we got five vendors to respond back. Uh, they were, um, I guess, graded. And this is what all five uh, evaluators came up with this, with this uh, playground. Um, the, only, the only one was the color, but I guess we'll, we'll discuss that. Uh, I think we had pretty much a, a split. So uh, it was the, between this color here, color, common, uh, color combination, and um, so this is the, I guess, 3D angle. It is going to be all turf. Uh, it does have a 20 by 20 uh, canopy over the top, and it does have the swing set. So, um, so it was between this color here and this color here. Uh, there's actually a third color, which is this one here. But the ones that were chosen were this one and this one. How how hard would it to add to be to add a hand wash station? <laughs> like like maybe on the entrance before the kids get there. Uh, that would be on our on the on the park would have to do that. This because this went out for bid already and um, it was not on our our bid. Um, yeah. But that that shouldn't be. That sh that shouldn't be. Uh, I guess. Uh, Something that these guys would have to do, the contractors. Now, one of the things that we're doing um, in relation to COVID for for our playgrounds is we're buying equipment that is um, uh, to be able to sanitize our playground equipment, restrooms, everything. So, what it is, it's a um, it's a mister, it's an electrostatic uh, mister. And so uh, we're buying several of those for the guys, um, not just parks, but also our public buildings so that we can sanitize all our facilities. And so uh, that's what we'll be doing. And, and right now they're doing it with the backpack sprayers, but we're just trying to get better, I guess a better equipment. unit, better equipment. Yeah. Yeah. 
just, just so you can know, this is this should be going in. Uh, it's going to go to commission um, here at the next meeting on the 15th, and then hopefully within, I guess, 60 to 90 days. I, I know there's a, there's some were saying delay with the COVID. Uh, some of the plants were running a little behind, but let's give or take 60 to 90 days. Hopefully, we'll have that in our Hunter Park. Hey, Javier, what do we have to do? Because I know uh, este, Dr. Villarreal passed away. And uh, is there a way possibly to get a park named after him? Um, yeah, that, that would um, that would have to be the city, the city commission uh, to do that. I'm not sure there's a policy on naming um, facilities, but uh, we can definitely, you know, take that idea to the city commission. Yeah, I know he did a lot for the community and stuff, even the Boy Scouts and the county. He built and he helped out with the, I guess the, the Camp Perry. I know he made a big donation out there, and I don't know, just he he did a lot for Harlingen, and he was on the school board for many years as well. Yeah, it's a good idea. Lupe. Well, like I mentioned uh, earlier, we got a couple of weeks in in this in the spring season for softball, and so we got shut down. And once we did so, um, we waited till about the end of April to go ahead and cancel the season. And we gave every team the opportunity to either uh, request a refund or roll over their registration fee to the upcoming season, which we thought would be a, a summer season. Um, then just this Monday, we canceled the, the summer season. And again, we just kept the same format. Uh, if the teams want to come in and get a refund, they can, they can do so. If not, they can roll it over to the next uh, available season, which would be the fall if, if there is a fall season. I'll take, I'll take aquatics. Um, not really much to discuss on swimming pools and splash pads. They remain closed. Uh, we do have our lifeguards still maintaining the pools. Um, or if, um, uh, I guess, city administration or, you know, say, hey, you know what, we're going to open up pools here. Uh, we are still maintaining them to be ready for that. But we, we have not, we didn't hire um, all our staff, our school staff. So um, obviously we need some time. Um, and if, I don't know if you don't already know, uh, our aquatic supervisor is no longer with the city. Uh, so Adam, Adam, uh, went to another city. I'll just keep it at that, but Adam is no longer with the city of Harlingen. So, uh, we're actually in the process of, um, finding somebody to fill the supervisor spot. That's all I have on aquatics. Okay. All right. Move on to, I know we are over our time by a lot, so I'll, I'll go to item number 11 discussion and possible direction to city staff as to any items to be placed on future agendas. Um, I think Abel mentioned hand washing stations and I think it's a great idea. Um, could, could y'all look into that and, and present us some just options or ideas or anything like that um, at the next meeting? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Um, board, if y'all don't have anything else, I'll go ahead and um, uh, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that a motion. To okay, adjourn. one second. I second. Okay. Any opposed? All righty. Um, thank you, everybody, for your time and for your input. Um, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Y'all be safe. Y'all be safe. Bye.